All right, Anders, it's such a, a privilege to have you here on the Social Entrepreneurship and Innovation Podcast. And for folks who are unfamiliar, would you mind quickly introducing yourself and, and sharing with us a little bit as to what it is that you do? Sure, Corey, and thank you very much for having me. So I'm Anders, I um, run a sustainable and social impact startup called A Good Company. It's a Swedish company from the beginning. I'm also a Swedish guy. Um, so it's my time now, a little bit over 9 p.m. and I'm sitting outside. It's beautiful here in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, and A Good Company, we are, we can come into that a little bit later, but short, we are all about inspiring people to uh, go for mindless consumption, think about things a little bit more in their everyday life and be more, take more conscious decisions. It could be in shopping or it can be how to be more preservative with the resources or how to spend our time into things. So that's us basically. Excellent. And I'm very energized. Uh, I was out for a run just before the call, so I'm very energized. Perfect. So was I, actually. It's, it's good, good prep work, just, uh, just different time zones a little yeah. bit. How was your, how was your run? Uh, it, it was hot. It's muggy here in, in San Antonio. And uh, uh -huh. you know, I ran two miles. You know, I don't know exactly what the conversion is to kilometers, but you oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick little jog to refresh, see what kind of good questions I could come up with. Yeah, that's cool. So <laughs> the script was written during the run. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Letting all the, the reading and, and digesting marinate, I come, with, come up with my best, best questions while I'm moving. Yeah. Hopefully sure. it goes the same for me then with the answers. We'll see. <laughs> um, so uh, it, one of the, the things that I, I caught of the, the many features and, and uh, articles you've written I caught your progress updates over at YouTube for a good company. And I, one of the most recent ones, uh, it seems as if we've uh, passed year one with a good company. So yeah. what, what, what does that sort of milestone felt like for you? And, and uh, um, you know, what, what's kind of on the immediate horizon, given the fact of yeah, such a uh, monumental year. moment? Yeah, I think one year for us, it, first of all, it feels like 10. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> that's the, it feels like a decade. So much things has happened since the 1st of March. I, I can recall that the 1st of March 2019, we had our first customer was from India. And obviously, you're like obsessed in the beginning, like who's ordering, who's ordering. And then obviously, no one is ordering in the beginning. So it's, it's like putting a flag on the moon. Um, but I think the year retrospect has been very challenging into some extent but most of all so fun and i'm i'm so humble but also so proud of what we as a team has achieved we launched like 20 different products a foundation a good community so much uh the only thing that's maybe lagging is like sleep and sometimes some some family time <laughs> but yeah, family time I care about a lot. Sleep not so much. So <laughs> sure. I think yeah, it's it's been an amazing year. And uh, that that was just a curious point uh, of my own. Is you know doing the the research that I was on on you and a good company. I think I came across the fact that y'all had been around since March 2019, pretty late. And so I was surprised. Uh, my my fiance as well was surprised. We were we were astonished with how much that y'all have seemed to accomplish and establish from the foundation to the, yeah. the extremely thoughtful and engaging content on y'all's blog, to all the products. So I'm interested, you know, what, what do you think has led to such exceptional execution in the, in the first 12 months? Yeah, I think one is paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> like we have to do this now. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, but now a little bit more serious. I think that we have been very, very well thought through into some extent. Before we launched, we worked almost six years with supply chain, preparing, mm. establishing the team. And I mean, if you do that properly from the beginning, chances are that you can be better in execution. Mm. And I'm not a, not a uh, novel guy into e-commerce. I've been doing it for like 10 years before. So we know some tricks and, and findings about what to do right. Um, and also, I think that we have been so energized about that the response has been this amazing. So we, I think my first 
not official day, but one of like the other stepping stones before we deployed was like the around the 10th of November uh, 2000, that will be 2018. And the 12th of November, my third kid was born. And I was like, normally when a kid is born, that's a like big thing. It was for me as well. I'm not putting out to, to downgrade that. But I was so like, I was so into that we had figured out the packaging material, which we worked with for quite some time. So it's been, yeah, I think we also had some luck, honestly. We've been lucky in finding suppliers who understand us. Uh, we've been lucky with getting good people on board. And even though that we are a very remote team, we have been able to focus on a very few things, but do that, do that uh, in a at least okay manner, I would say. How do you find, how do you find the progress updates, Corey? Uh, it, interesting. It's nice to, to track those back, you know, something very quickly, five minutes, seven minutes uh, short yeah. and brief. Um, yeah, I, I, it's something that we're trying to do here as well. Girl Ensemble, we have a you know pretty in-depth newsletter that we produce every single week. And just going through, thinking about the strategy and reflection for the company, it's an exercise I do on a month-to-month basis as is. And you know, I, we're thinking about, we just released a podcast like this, kind of an April reflection. Um, before I knew you, you were doing those progress updates, but it's nice to see those. And we, I think I might plug some of them into to YouTube as well. But yeah. it's good to see you know, not just how the business is operating, but a little bit of the outer look of, you know, what is the strategy and reflection upon it? Um, you know, it, it's, it's nice to see where the priorities are behind just the website. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. And we try to be, I think that's one of our like pillars to be completely transparent. And mm-hmm. then you have to share the good and bads. So obviously you lean on thinking about the progress update that you speak a little bit more about the positive things but that, right. that's also i'm i'm also a very positive guy i tend to like okay let's put that negative thing in a box and then we can hide a box under <laughs> another box and then under another other box and then it disappears <laughs> but i mean that um doing them there's also a these are little exercise for us to think about what did we achieve the last month Mm. but also to communicate like if you've been following the latest month how people understand also that that sometimes things are not going as well as planned i mean we've been working on the humanium pen i've been saying that like four progress updates soon Mm. we're about to launch the humanium pen still no pen (laughs) (laughs) and uh, the same goes with our fashion line and that we have like we now we have steady progress on the fashion line but i think it's interesting at least when i'm speaking about it in the progress update to see that okay we think that we are moving at a steady pace and maybe compared with like an old big uh company like a traditional company, we are moving at a fast pace, but sometimes things take time. And if you're not cutting corners and you are obsessed with details, then, you know, a month that, that just uh, rolls like a stone. And then you are on in, now we are soon in summer, at least here in, in Stockholm, Sweden. I can see it outside. Two months ago, it was snow and winter here uh, at the terrace. So I think it's, and it's very, like the progress updates, it's very, believe it or not but it's very popular from our community Mm. that's our like if we look at our when we're sending out the newsletters we send out one every week and the one per month that has the highest opening rates is the one where we include the progress the progress update Mm. yeah i I think it's an interesting timestamp as well you know so that y'all can perhaps go back in time as well to see that exact thing like yeah we've been reporting on launching this new product for the last four months. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. But there is certainly that thing. I I love that mention. Um, We actually just wrote about this in in our newsletter uh, as a reflection for our last month. Uh, Everything always takes longer and usually costs more than expected. Yeah, we never experienced the last one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it's, you know, it's feels like it's battling against some of your own perceptions and impatience, you know, because it's yeah. hard to create that momentum in whatever it is, you know, in the context of creating content or creating a podcast or whatever it might be, you know, it's like 
similarly, when you make that first sale, you're like, yeah, no one's buying. And so we're celebrating the one, but you know, you can't really just stop there. There's ultimately, ideally, you know, more of an exponential curve as opposed yeah. to just linearly. But, you know, it works that way with, with producing content, you know, producing these things that are really thoughtful, you know, as I'm sure y'all are noticing with uh, all the very engaging stuff that you create over at your blog. It's like, you know, nothing really, if, if you were to stop after creating two or three posts because nothing really happens, you know, you, you miss out on so many yeah. kind of compounding rewards and effects and, you know, ideally fruits of the, the labor and investment of time and energy that you put in. Yeah, and I think two things are good when you're looking back at things you've done. One is that you're always ashamed about what you did like <laughs> four or five months ago since you are actually progressing a lot. Uh, I, as I said, when we had a pre-chat, I listened to a lot of your podcasts and I can see that you also guys are evolving and getting better and mm. uh, are more clever in questions and getting good conversations and so on and so forth. I hope so, man. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I can assure you that that's the case. <laughs> um, but that's also like the thing with organizations. You get better, you get more evolved, but there's also a danger into when you are growing a little bit. We are still a quite tight-knit crew, mm -hmm. but there is a time like when, so when you're scaling and when you're doing more and more things, it comes a natural time where people are thinking about what's my responsibility. You get some friction between different functions and that's very logical that it happens, but that's like, you can't even think about that when you're launching first of March, 2019. It's not the time to spend with the team mm. to put effort into that and to avoid that. Uh, we had like, when we have a strategy day with the, some of the team, we can't, we can't gather everyone since we are based in what are we seven countries or something. Mm -hmm. So, and since we try to avoid flying at any cost, it doesn't make sense. So most of them were, were on like zoom or Google meet and so on. Mm -hmm. Then it's time to speak about that. And the first time you speak about it, people laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. And then comes a time in April, May, like a few months later where we actually, then we have that glass ceiling. And it's totally normal for organization, I guess for the same for you guys and other organizations that the company itself is like a human. It also comes into new phases and it comes into, and since we are very blessed with having people on board that truly care for a good company. And that's, if I will like pick one thing that I'm extremely proud of is that, that we actually build a culture where people care, but that also means that you get friction and that friction is really nice. Like I can see it as the business leader of the company that that friction, that spark between people, that is what creating the, the, uh, the extra, the like, uh, the, uh, the cream on the pudding, if you like, but for people who are maybe not getting the will forward, that could be a bit complex. Hmm. And so how, how are you responding to that? You see a spark or something like that, and maybe, maybe that is, or maybe it isn't happening, you know, in um, the current time period for a good company, but how do you as the leader of the organization begin to respond and react? Yeah, I think um, if I'm very open now, since 9 p.m., we can be open to one yeah, another. that hour. I think right. one thing is to, to let it happen. I think too many too many leaders in general are afraid of conflicts. I mean, conflict could be very negative into some extent, but sometimes you just need to speak out. Mm -hmm. And my, the only thing I am really bad at in general is to understand the things that are not said. Mm -hmm. That's like my major, if, if there is a competence in life, I uh, am so, um, I'm so missing out and I um, can really see it with my wife. They can like grasp every, mm. every little thing that happens and is not said and I just can't do it. Mm. So what I'm trying to tell my organization, like be open, say what it is. I won't take, I won't, won't take it personal and there's a difference between a role and a person, right? Um, and even though if you have conflicts, you have conflicts with a role or you have arguments with the role, it doesn't mean that you can't 
do a, I don't know how you do it now, a social meet, the a social distancing um, after work mm -hmm. and have a glass of like remote wine. And that, sure. that is completely different. So it needs to let it happen a little bit and not try to engage at first. And sometimes you just need to, to gather the people and say, okay, three hours now, we need to solve this. And in three hours, if we haven't solved it as a group and everyone thinks that we are now aligned, then we lean on the decision that we're going to take as a group for that. Eventually, if we cannot find that, as I have to take as a group, since we cannot scale this company, we cannot spend time now to do all of the things we like with our foundation. We cannot survive COVID-19 if we are spending time just speaking about things internally. We have to be agile and we have to trust that the accountability that comes when people care also sometimes need to stand back for the for the course of the company you know what i mean mm -hmm. and, and so thinking about year two especially in this uh wildly different context than um anyone could have imagined um it's covid19 what what are some things that you hope y'all will do more of at a good company and maybe uh, as well do less of I think, um, tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I see COVID-19, obviously it's quite, uh, it's, a, it's a terrible pandemic and it hurts people all across, especially the people that are way less fortunate than, than you and me, I guess. Mm. Uh, but on a broader level, I mean, for us as a company, we really need to turn the stones to, we need to turn on every stone and see, could we make this a little bit differently? Mm. Could we skip to do things that are not completely like value added? Um, mm. We have been fortunate enough not to been pushed doing any layoffs or anything. So we had a really rough like first week in March where like sales just dropped. And I think a lot of people can see that. And we thought at first, like, okay, internet is down. <laughs> and then we realized that maybe, maybe it's not internet, it's us. <laughs> and then it was the pandemic, right? Um, so, but now we can see like, okay, we can, we can do things more clever. And I think a good thing about being 12 people rather than being 1200 people is that it's quite easy to, to shift and stand on the right foot for a little time rather than the left foot. Uh, and on a broader thing, I think when we are passing through the pandemic, which I'm sure that we as people will, I see so many opportunities. This will be a wake up call to do things differently. And I think we desperately need that as a species if we should survive, honestly. Mm -hmm. Can you can you say more about that? What what are some of the observations and and reflections that you've had? Yeah, I mean, if I'm if I'm looking at my my um, personal understanding for climate change, that hit me quite late. It was the summer of 2018, so you can then segue to okay, then starting a good company and then spending the life of a good company, right? <laughs> so it's part from that and. Uh, reason for it was that it was extremely hot here in Sweden and we really see when we live at the country house at summer that okay close to nature you experience climate change it's not like if you're in an urban area I'm sure you can mm -hmm. you can see it there for yourself but I needed to see that a well is dry uh, the grass is burnt our cows cannot eat shit things are are going south here that is a thing that many of my friends, at least if I'm speaking about my, my close community, they are not there. Even though that they are clever, well-educated people who are, they have the ability in terms of the economics to change their life into different, different behaviors, but they have been fairly slow. Hmm. And I think COVID-19 on the positive thing about it is that we see that we can change. Hmm. That is the one thing, even though that the virus forces us to do things we do not like, we understand now that we don't have to do business travel. It is all right to think about, is it realistic that we should uh, consume at this pace as we have been doing? Is it, so I think a lot of like the things that we've been taking for granted 
when things comes to you and hit you, you understand that it's possible to change. And actually, like I see that COVID-19, this is something that will pass it can take one year two year i cannot tell and no one can even though that many people are thinking about and and having thoughts about they have the ability to say when it will end mm -hmm. uh but it will end but climate change if that hit us full throttle which it will if we are not changing the route that is something permanent mm. and that i think is a positive thing about the covid19 that we as humans and we as a society we understand that we need to change route in certain things and we have an urgency doing it mm. what do you think I, about it <laughs> i mean much uh, of the same that. i'm sorry <laughs> good luck with that small question right 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 <laughs> i mean uh, i have you know very similar reflections in that it is impressive to the degree that massive action can be taken you know and we start to see these these anecdotes of you know different reporting and that kind of stuff how emission levels have dropped as we've halted you know this this human activity um you know we're seeing marine life uh, uh, affected with less noise pollution in the ocean like all these little things that are you know positive kind of silver linings for what would be uh, the implications to the climate crisis. I guess my concern, and you know, always try to veer on the side of optimism and hope, um, is you know the, the the fear of things just kind of returning back to normal in some degree. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, that's what I'm wondering. You know, as people have a lot of resistance in some way, maybe it's different in the states than it is in Sweden, but a lot of resistance to life not being the way as it was you know, currently during this crisis, a lot of people feel, I think it, to some degree that something was taken away from them, you know, like what was a normal life was taken away from them, vacation or work or whatever it might be. Yeah. And, and as, you know, in a lot of degree, uh, uh, respects, that's, that's largely true. Um, you know, so I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I'm dropped in some level of uncertainty to which there will be, I'm subtle maybe changes, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering when the world allows once again, if activity will, you know, kind of skyrocket skyrocket back to some degree of, of normal as to, to yeah. what it was. Yeah, hopefully not, I would say. I can see hopefully the like, not. I'm looking, <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. I can see like if on, on, um, on our customer base, the first nine month of operation, we had primarily like women 20 to 35 ordering from our, our company. Mm. Um, and we sell to approx 50, 50 countries a month. So it says something, at least I would say. Now I can see COVID, like you cannot look at statistic right now, but if we, if we can push March and April, like December, January, and February, we saw a shift in demographics. More men were ordering new countries were ordering new regions. If you take us, as one example, it's not just the East and the West ordering anymore. Uh, where you live, loads of people have started ordering. And I think that people are, I hope at least, and I'm, I'm uh, truly betting on that it will be a wave of people starting to think about making conscious decisions. And I think one reason for that is also that they understand that the politicians running different countries, they won't save the mass. Mm. So they need to act themselves. And I think if it's very hot for, for you when you were out for running, add, I don't know, 15 more Fahrenheit to that. Mm -hmm. Not so nice. <laughs> and I, I think that is things that people can relate to or well, well dries out more frequently. Like our well, at, at, as I told you before, when it dried out, that was the first time at that specific farm for 150 years. Hmm. Nothing in the books has ever told us when we were looking at the historic of the farm that the well had dried. And I mean, if that can happen over one summer when it just gets unbearably hot, and I'm at first as a human, things like, okay, this is super nice. Hmm. Like it was Mediterranean all over. We don't have to go to Italy. We can have it here in Sweden, and then realize, oh shit, <laughs> this is not so good. Mm -hmm. This is like, Okay, animals are dying here if you're not fixing this. And yeah, I'll, I'll have long, long, uh, uh, endless uh, dialogue about that. But I, I hope 
that COVID will help us put to push us into uh, the right directions and that we understand that behavior change, even though it's complex and not comfortable, is doable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I like what you mentioned, you know, as the kind of what, what comes first, the, the policy or, you know, people actually taking action and yeah. uh, uh, starting the movement themselves. You know, ideally we would want either, right? We would like governments to regulate these sorts of things. So those constraints just exist in society as to what degree people can pollute and that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, and I've heard you mention this on a, another podcast before, you know, is that oftentimes politicians, uh, those in control of, of writing and creating policy, they are you know, looking to what people seem to want um, yeah. because they need, those votes, right? They want to continue to, to get elected. And so there is... Totally logically that it is that way. Like, Certainly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, ha- I had a, when, <laughs> another thing where we, we actually were able to make one piece of the Humanium pen very <laughs> late. <laughs> now we're able to make a little bit more, but we were able to make one piece and we were invited to the Swedish parliament a couple of months back. And I spoke for a lot of politicians, right, at the, the parliament and I could tell that I was basically looking in the eye and, and tell them that you won't change until your voters change or demand you change. Mm-hmm. And you should be a little bit embarrassed about yourself since being a politician means to sometimes uh, put yourself on a leash and uh, stand for something so you can lead for change rather than following the mass vote. Mm. But into some extent, and maybe that was like an unpleasant moment for them and maybe it changed one person or maybe zero. But into some extent, I also understand that they are relying on the votes. It's like totally normal that they have to do that. But that doesn't change the world. I mean, Steve Jobs doesn't didn't change the world of how we... Uh, interact with our cell phone overlooking how uh, Nokia, Sony and all of these other players were doing. They were progressing and Mm. we try to be that company in our very niche and and maybe you are trying to be that in your niche. We need to we need to have brave people who put like upload their house and put all of that money into making fulfilling their dream and hopefully the dream can be good for a lot of people and spark the change needed for so many. Mm, certainly. I mean, I, you know, I, I think with the, the example of the politicians, it's, it's sometimes rare to see that them, they will specifically, you know, stand up for what they personally believe in, you know, or, or yeah. advocate for, for those things. And it, it sadly is a bit of a rarity as opposed to, again, you know, uh, uh, just kind of regurgitating what it seems their constituents, their voting constituents you know, may specifically say, but, yeah. you know, I, I love those, those, uh, the mentions of, you know, the brave and, and courageous there. I, I see y'all at a good company doing a, a multitude of things, the, the good foundation, um, the, the, uh, the, uh, blog and, and articles that, that y'all put together there. And of course the products that you sell, um, thinking about how y'all influence this behavior change, you know, as, as you talk about taking folks from mindless consumption to more conscious decisions, uh, what what kind of feels like the strategy or the the approach that y'all are taking? Like, what kind of principles or thoughts are you leaning on in your uh, uh, attacking these behavior changes that y'all want to see instituted in the world? Yeah, I think we have a few but very important principles. Great question, by the way. Uh, one is to be completely transparent mm. and. If you are an entrepreneur, you're always a little bit paranoid and being completely transparent is then very nice since you don't have to be that afraid of that a journalist knocks on your door and asks you an unpleasant question in an evening. So that is number one for us. Don't cut corners is the second pillar for us in everything we do. And this aligns with our like online shop where we sell these sustainable everyday products, which we design. Um, at the a good community, which is like the platform where we highlight people who we believe that are doing good things into mm-hmm. their local community, and then they obviously the foundation where we yeah support long term activities uh, on the bold promise of having zero fees, which was the only thing we could like align with when we were launching that. 
And I mean, these are, and then free, not overcomplicated things. Mm -hmm. um, I had six years as a management consultant after my last companies I sold 2012. And what you see when you are working with different companies is that being too complex typical kills everything that's fun. Mm. And we try to avoid that. I mean, if life ain't fun, why bother? Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be fun to go to work. We can't spend this much time and this much energy and have a fair risk of failing. Hopefully we are past that now since we are more than one year old. But mm -hmm. if, you, if you put all your life savings into something and really like really pray for that this will this will catch on and there's a perfect timing for doing something like this it has to be fun on the way and i think if you're doing that and if you're following the other the other pillars that highlights through uh communication both internally but more maybe more importantly externally with your customers so they feel that you you are true with that and that you always, when you go to bed, even if it's 1 a.m. in the morning or 10 p.m. or whatever time it is, that you feel that, okay, at least I have been, I have been true to my very few important values that we, mm. that we care for. Hmm. And, and so I guess with all that in mind, you know, this, this stress of uh, enjoying it, you know, on the, the way through, I'm curious where you currently are spending your time. And obviously this may be completely different, uh, you know, as the day-to-day -day looks different now than it did pre COVID-19, but what is your day-to-day -day looking like as uh, um, the leader of a, a good company? Yeah. So 2020 uh, for me as a leader is all about enabling our other functions to step forward. I mean, the first year of operation, which was 2019, as a business leader and, and the driving force of the company, you have to be on top of everything. And since we are also, especially 2019, that small, that means also that you're carrying a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. Now we have in customer service, we have a couple of people working there. We have a dedicated manager that runs that. And even though they never met in, in person, it has to be the case that the person responsible for that is getting the opportunity to build, in this case, his team in the way he like. Uh, and the same goes with communication or uh, our designers or whatever. So one thing for me has been like to step away, step out from meetings a lot. Mm. And then also... Uh, work on things that are important and, and running if we take the online shop as one like one example it's a grinding thing it's all about and i do this daily and maybe it's clever or maybe it's stupid i don't know <laughs> but i every day i spend time in our customer service department mm. replying to tickets uh just to understand what people are asking for and how we can improve and that's the reason now we are setting up a U.S. warehouse, partly. The second one is shipping cost, but it's that we understand that we have to improve that. And I think that is the thing to, yeah, that's the thing for me to be in, into some extent stepping out from daily operation into other extent really like taking the role as a person into a team and really try to learn about that. So we, on a strategic level, do good uh, and, and pick good. And then thirdly, I hope at least be very uh, inspirational and believing that we have this like once in a lifetime opportunity. That's maybe a little bit sad. Twice in a lifetime <laughs> opportunity. Let's say twice in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, to really create something that we can be very proud of. Hmm. And I mean that, yeah, Swedish people are very, I don't know how many Swedish people you met, but Swedish people, and we are a very international organization. We have more people in, in South Africa and Hong Kong than in Sweden, but Swedish people, and we have a Swedish heritage. We typically do not believe in ourselves um, as much as we should do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a thing where I really try to be a little bit American, if you like. <laughs> 
to, to like really put uh, and energize our organization that come on guys let's be believe in ourselves better better do something fail it a bit and, and then uh, uh, reverse engineer that and do something else but at least like really be bold about that we that we are doing amazing things mm. yeah that's uh commenting on the the american exceptionalism that uh is a yeah. a complex that that is existing over here uh for better or you know for worse often for yeah. worse um we could be a bit more humble you know? here do you think it's often for worse um i think in America, we have extremes far more than most other countries. Um, yeah. You know, and as what comes with extremes on that, and as well, in extreme sense that America, I mean, we kind of have grown up indoctrinated with America being the greatest country on earth. It's like something often, I think that doesn't exist in as much um, political speech in other countries as it does in America. You know, we, it does not. I can tell you that. There we <laughs> it's go. Right. <laughs> right. Of the, the reading, studying, and, and living in other countries that I have done, it does not seem to exist for, uh, uh, um, you know, to the degree that it does in the States. And so with that, there's this odd obsession with being first, you know, in, in some degree, and um, not in some degree, to a great degree. And, and you know, with that, obviously, there's, uh, I mean, we've talked about paranoia here uh, a bit. There's paranoia that gets created, you know, yeah. um, as you, you are fearing uh, the outside or, you know, you sometimes fear others and believe that there are uh, no better ways than the American way. And so I, yeah. I certainly think that can come into conflict. You know, I mean, in America, we, we do prioritize entrepreneurship and celebrate uh, business and financial success, I think, much more than other countries do, you know, yeah. we prioritize yeah. Work I mean, over. if we can be a little bit more American, we try to, we take everything that the Swedish, like the Swedish heritage, that we care for details, we are obsessed with them. And I can see when we are like deploying a new product, there's nothing our designers haven't thought about, tested mm -hmm. and so on. And sometimes I can be like, not furious, but I can be like, come on guys, can we just, can we just deploy now? No, we need mm -hmm. to think about that. We need to think about that. And obviously, all times is better to wait another week than to push something too early on. Sure. But at least when we are putting it out, when we are deploying it, I think that European companies and Swedish companies then in specifics, they need to be a little bit more American in terms mm -hmm. of since I know how much effort and time sometimes for some products like the, the mobile cases we have, we spend 15 months of constant failures, testing, mm. testing, 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 testing. I, like at our office, we have, I don't know, 2000 failed examples. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously when you're then fulfilling the dream of making a plant-based mobile case from waste material here in Sweden, that looks like a, like a fashion case, mm -hmm. then we have to be a little bit proud about it. Mm -hmm. And the Swedish style is more of an engineering kind of philosophy. Like this is the characteristics of the product. And yeah, we, we miss out the opportunity to tell the world about all of the good things that we um, have put into the product and all time. And mm -hmm. since we are not buying something off the shelf in a market from uh, there's nothing wrong about that. We're not buying it. We're not buying any, any like ready goods from a market in Asia or in US or in Europe. Then I think that we as, as designers or customer service, whatever it is, we should take pride in, in the work we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's probably always a happy medium, <laughs> you know, there's uh, <laughs> Swedish companies might, might do well to be a little bit more American and American companies might do well to be a little bit more like Swedish companies. Yeah. Um, certainly. Enter France. No, sorry. You mentioned something uh, that I wanted to come back to. You, you said, you know, focusing on important things, that's really how you try to, to spend your day to day. And I think that's just easy. Like, oh yeah, obviously focus on important things. But I, I'm interested to know, especially being a young company, you know, like we are as well, there's so many different priorities you know, that yeah. you can potentially take on. So I'm wondering, how is it that you are deciding what's important? How are you prioritizing 
um, and how does that affect, you know, at, for example, you spending time in the, the customer, customer service department, maybe that's yeah. counterintuitive for what people think, you know, the CEO might be doing, but I, I'd love to hear if there's a process there. Yeah, sure. So we have, we have two things, which I would say that we have been excelling in. One is having a understandable strategy. We have like four things which we should uh, uh, focus on and whatever suggestion comes up and I can assure you that suggestions is coming up. (laughs) All of the organization is bubbling and it's also coming from our customers and suppliers and so on. We try to first decide, does this fit the strategy? The second thing we do is, and this is something uh, I at least, I, I cannot force since people work best in the, in, if they can work in the methods they, they like, I can just uh, uh, supply them with options. And I think a thing which I do is that I set off time, like three times a week, two hours uh, at a time, where I permit uh, uh, all types of meetings. So, mm-hmm. and I always, when I'm like entering in this time, like, what the heck shall I do now? <laughs> Email is checked, Slack is checked. Uh, Trello's done, like what else? But I think these, to set this six hours a week, and if you work 60 hours a week, which may be something you as an entrepreneur do 40 to 70 hours, I mean, it's not that much. It's, it's maybe a roughly 10%. But just to stop the clock for a little bit and think about, then it takes maybe 20, 30 minutes, and you can do it while you're running or whatever you like to do. And I think that is a thing which sometimes really helps me to then, okay, I need to look into this data point or this is a thing we would like to do with a good community or this is a piece, like this is an article we need to to write or this is an area of a potential article. And these like, they don't come as you go. If you're in the whirlwind constantly and never had time for reflection, like, it, it doesn't, at least not for me, and maybe I'm too stupid for it, but it doesn't appear. I need to stop uh, and like turn off the computer a little bit and downgrade. And then I'm able to to prioritize and, and think strategically or tactically or operationally about what do we have to do. No, I, I mean, I, I think that that space is critically, critically, critically important. That was same kind of thread of advice that I, I received from a, a business coach a while back uh, running a, a digital marketing agency was to you know put even just 30 minutes on the calendar to, to start the day with really no agenda, maybe a, a journal kind of in front of you, um, you know, thinking about like whatever, you know, <laughs> essentially just yeah. kind of letting things percolate. <laughs> He you know, was going, obviously more clever than me if you only need 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, sure. You know, I always ended up uh, preferring to have more because the, the day would, would really launch right after that. But um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm in the same camp as you. I couldn't handle 30. I need much more than that. But yeah. I think that's, that's a, a critically important uh, point of advice to take. You know, I get a lot of satisfaction out of like legitimately shutting down my laptop to end the day for some reason, as opposed to just like putting it in sleep mode. I get a yeah. lot of a value from actually shutting it down and being like, all right, you're done. You're done for the day. You can't even yeah, turn on your you computer anymore. You did good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, Andrews, well, I, I want to be respectful of your time. I have a few kind of rapid fire questions for yeah, you here. No, go ahead. Finish up. Um, to start, are there any favorite books of yours, either that you've, you've recently read or, or that's impacted you rather tremendously to influence your, your views and perspectives on life and work? Life and work in books. So um, I think one which I um, can recommend is a business book, maybe a little bit boring, but <laughs> I can recommend it either way. Sure. Uh, the Four Disciplines of Execution. I mm-hmm. think it's an easy peasy thing to read and, and align on. Leading and lagging goals, like it's it works. We don't do that now. We are too agile or we have flavors of it where we are not following like uh in in a hundred percent at the good company but i saw from a a lot of organizations that it worked out really well 
then I am reading when I'm not falling asleep constantly. I'm reading a, then I'll, I need to, I think the book is called, could it be named Power? I've, yeah, who can you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you got any more for me? That's just one word. Is there anything else on it? Yeah, no, it's, I think it's called, um, let me see. It's called, I think it's called Power. It's about a, I can describe it for you and maybe someone clever at your listening. <laughs> sure. Podcast. I forgot the name. It's about that women in uh, like the ordinary world gets, get extraordinary powers. Hmm. They can, they can, they can like force electricity from their fingers, which they can hurt men with. So basically the, the, from that men have always been, stronger than women and then into some strange extent been more in power um now it's shifting towards women it's really amazing um i think it's a few years old i, I read it as you can hear i'm typically when i'm opening uh, the kindle i <laughs> read a few pages and then uh uh yeah i, I fall asleep i think the name is power maybe okay. we can put it on the notes uh definitely and, uh, yeah. yeah, if you dig that up, we'll we'll have our team look for that as well. Um, another and then I question. Do I do a lot of medium articles, reading them and writing them. Mm. I think it's a great thing to do. Yeah, I, I and I'm going to make sure we link up to a, a few of your medium articles. Um, very very insightful uh, stuff on the the world of e-commerce and really, I mean, this is kind of bridging elsewhere, but it's definitely kind of shocked my thoughts on how you run an e-commerce company, you know, just your, your recent one on uh, free returns, you know, could yeah. COVID-19, could this finally be the end of, of the free return policy? And I, I was so curious, you know, dove deep into it. I love it really well researched. You pack those with quite a bit of data. Um, uh, uh, really impressive there, but it's something that is just so simple you know, the concept of free returns, like, yeah, we're just doubling the emissions, you know, it, by increasing this entire journey that this product has to make, not to mention, you know, what, what do companies do with returned items? You know, whether that goes to landfill, can they actually reuse it, resell it, all that stuff. So simple and makes so much sense, but it was something that, you know, I, I haven't even thought about, you know, myself. I mean, I'm not in e-commerce, but it, obviously I, I buy things on the internet. So it's now yeah. making me think twice. Um, uh, with that as well, the influencer market. Oh, man, a lot of good reads. A lot of yeah. good. Reads. Thank you so much for, for reading these. <laughs> I think the the uh, free returns articles. That's a fifteen minute read. So I'm impressed by hey. you uh, digging through it. That's. Uh -huh. uh, have you heard of the app Instapaper by chance? Yeah. Yeah. So I just I clip all these articles that I come across because we do a lot of research over here for our own content and stuff at Grow Ensemble, and then I carve out an hour each morning to go through articles that have really kind of, they pique my curiosity a second time. I clip everything yeah. and then I probably read maybe 50% of them. Um, but yeah, it, it's otherwise I've gone in the past with just building up too much of a mountain of articles to catch up on and I never want to do it, but yeah, I've been getting more into them recently. So it's, yeah. it's um, how has your reading habit changed during uh, COVID-19? Um, I think it's gotten worse. Uh, I, I think I, I was previously kind of committed to roughly like two, two hours or so of reading every single morning. Um, usually an hour is when I'm diving into a book, whatever is piquing my curiosity at that time, it might be business related or, you know, something else, whatever it is. Um, uh, just cause I want to continue to just reinstill the habit of, I enjoy reading, I never want to be bored with it. Uh, and then articles after that. But I think I, I struggled with so much mindlessness uh, as COVID-19 broke out, whether it was being on Twitter or LinkedIn or something like that, it really kind of disrupted my flow. Cause I think the first yeah. thing that I was going to in the morning was more so news-based to see, you know, what was kind of happening in the world as it seemed to be every day, you know, was uh, <laughs> operating. At an ex it's like every day was a week, you know, every week was a month, whatever it felt like. Uh, I went to news first and foremost. And I think that I'm trying to adjust back to getting into the kind of solid morning reading routine that I, I had, but um, yeah, it was, it was shook a little bit. Yeah. I think we have to do that as, as people, right? We, we need to understand that maybe this is the new normal for a few months or certainly, and then uh, we cannot continue just being uh, 
reading. I do the same thing. I, I think the app I opened the most in March was New York Times. And mm-hmm. that's not normal for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that shouldn't be the way I should open, I don't know, Slack or e-commerce platform, whatever. But it, you just feel like the more you read about it, you get obsessed. Or at least I did. And now I limit myself to, I need to understand, especially when you have people that spread out you need to understand what's happening for them and with them and in the regions sure. but you also have a family and you have a work to do mm-hmm. and responsibility comes with that so you cannot stay on your time so now i limit myself to like 10 minutes a day new york times app that's max smart yeah, yeah. <laughs> on my works, good days I works can... most of the time <laughs> yeah yeah Um, so a couple more questions before we finish up, do you have uh, a morning routine or any sort of daily habits that, that you feel like you absolutely, uh, have to keep to? Yeah, I have two things I don't compromise on or three things. Actually, one is having breakfast with the family. Mm. Like we have three kids and that's the only hour a day where we know that everyone is, is at home and, since I, I did a lot of traveling uh, at my other job, I missed out a lot of breakfasts and that's like mm. holy grail time. Uh, second thing I never compromise on is training. Uh, so I told you I did a run just before this. I always find time and I put them into the calendar and it's as important as a board meeting. Mm. And it gets like, if you train a lot, it gets so much positiveness out of it. Mm-hmm. You can eat whatever you like. You feel strong, you feel energized. Maybe that's the best thing about you. <laughs> right. Uh, right. And third one is like, I always quit job at 5 p.m. Mm. Like, it doesn't matter. Or 3 p.m. if I'm about to pick up the kids. So we do it like by daily, who picks up and who be home. And then you have dinner time with them. And you spend time with the kids and you play with them for one, two hour or something like that and then typically since we have a lot of conversations with with the u.s and some of the staff are are based in these time zones Mm -hmm. it's convenient for me to work uh in the evening and i don't mind doing that i'm always very uh empowered in the evenings it's something about when it's getting dark and a little bit more quiet that you'd be more focused at at Hmm. at Mm -hmm. the, the things that matters uh so I divide my day into the work day into to two parts where the steering wheel of it is like kids and family time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these are the three principles I try to 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 follow every day. And I think if you if you are true with that, since family is a thing that is very important for me, I, I and you know kids, the more time you spend with them, the more time mm-hmm. you would like to spend with them as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you start compromising on that, then instantly, or not instantly, but over time, you will you will lose yourself. Mm. And and work is very important. And I love a good company, and I'm so proud of what we do with the foundation and and everything we do. But at the end of the day, what's really important is family. That's like mm. the most important thing and the most precious things we have. And and if I cut that out for another meeting or checking Slack, who am I? Then I'm not a, a, yeah, I'm not a good father, and I try to to put energy into being that. Hmm. Excellent. And and lastly, Anders, uh, what sort of advice would you give to uh, a 20, 25 year old uh, aspiring impact entrepreneur, someone who wants to to build a, a social impact company, like a good company? Yeah. Start another good company. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like, uh, not exactly. Yeah. But. yeah. Now that could be the brand name. Another good company. <laughs> another good company. No pun intended. There we go. Um, mm-hmm. Now I mean that what you have to do, and I think what I have learned over my 37 years on earth is to be humble for knowledge. And that's why I le- read a lot of things on Medium, discuss a lot of things with others. So I think that's, the only thing that matters over time is execution. Mm-hmm. The rest, if you have a great product, that's awesome. If you have a great innovation, that's also awesome. But I think most of the best products are already invented or it is invented somewhere else. If we were 
thinking about climate positive mobile case or recycled cotton um, like everyday apparels obviously 25 other people is thinking about mm -hmm. about that so and I, and I think that people are taking a little bit too much pride into the idea and they forgot about the grinding and I can tell you one thing running if you're interested in running a a online shop or a foundation or whatever it's long hours there mm. isn't any silver bullet around available i'm sorry for that but <laughs> if you are willing to put in the time eventually you will find your market uh, and rely on the data doing so it will guide you to who your customers are and so on and so forth so and it's not that i mean i failed this is my fifth company out of these five two have been bankrupt uh, two went okay. We will see about this one. It's not the end of the world, right? <laughs> always, you can always start another good company. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you can always start another good company. That's right. Yeah, no, we will uh, keep this one as a keeper. But uh, I mean, it's not the end of the world. The time every every day the sun goes down and in the morning goes up, and then you just have to grind for another day and ensure well you grind. Stay true to what's important for you and and don't end up as many people i guess a lot of our parents or our friends parents they wake up old and they they realize that we forgot a lot of a big chunk of who they were into only focusing on the career and it's not worth it mm. excellent excellent thoughtful advice for us to to end on here so yeah. anders I, I really appreciate you taking the time we'll make sure everything a good company, not another good company is, is linked up to, not your competitor. We'll make sure everything yeah. a good company is, is linked up to in our show notes at growensemble.com. Thanks again, Anders. Thank you so much. And as you can see now, it's pitch black outside. Yeah. It, was, it was nice to see oh, cool. that, that progression over time <laughs> over yeah. our chat. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Corey. It's a dear pleasure.